So in this video, I'd like to actually talk specifically about the characteristics of flame. And I think first and foremost, I think the most notable thing about flame is that it is huge. It's actually about 20 megabytes in size. And you might be thinking, well, 20 megabytes is not that big compared to all the other software applications you might have on your system. But this is really big for malware. And I'm going to give you, in contrast, um, Stuxnet, which a lot of people compare Flame to, given its role as a potential cyber weapon. Stuxnet was about uh, 500K, so about half a megabyte. Uh, and what that means is that Flame is about 40 times bigger than Stuxnet, so 40x bigger than Stuxnet. Um, and Stuxnet itself even was considered a pretty big piece of malware. So, I mean, you know, 20 megabytes is almost kind of unfathomably big for malware. And the reason for that is that malware authors traditionally don't like to create big malware because it takes a lot longer to download it and therefore it inhibits the rate at which that malware might spread. Um, the second thing that I want to mention also about Flame is it's got a plug-in architecture. Uh, and really, no two instances are, are going to be, I guess you can have two instances that are alike, but the bot master, the guy who controls the, the first string, so to speak, on the back end, can control whatever plugins are loaded onto a particular instance. And so you might have some instances that have a few plugins, others that have many of them. I think there are maybe about uh, 20 or so plugins uh, that you can actually put within a Flame instance. And so um, that allows for a lot of flexibility on what the actual malware can do. And it might vary from system to system depending on the actual needs of that system. Okay. The other thing I, I want to point out is that the reason Flame is so huge is it's got many, many components. And so, you know, what are some of the different components within Flame? Uh, well, one of the first, uh, you know, big things within Flame is, is actually there's a lot of code, there's a lot of libraries. And so some of the libraries include uh, libraries for uh, compression. And there actually are multiple different compression mechanisms. So they have kind of standard ones like, uh, like Zlib and, and so on. Uh, but there are, I think, maybe about three or so different compression mechanisms within Flame. Uh, there's also uh, code for handling database operations, and so there's a database code. Uh, specifically, uh, there is code for something called SQLite, uh, which is a uh, kind of a small database program you can put in on an individual client system. Uh, and the third thing, which I think is particularly interesting in relation to Flame, is that Flame also contains within it a virtual machine or code for a virtual machine uh, of uh, a scripting language called Lua. Uh, so this is kind of unusual. Lua is, as I mentioned, a scripting language. It is um, it can be easily extended. Uh, it's extensible and it's got interfaces for interfacing with C. Uh, and I think that you know I do want to point out that this is very unusual. You, you don't see uh, Lua in the context of malware. So very unusual for malware to to use something like Lua. Um, and there's not that much Lua code. I think it's maybe about a few thousand lines of, of Lua code within uh, within Flame. But it's it's again something that I think kind of stands out just because it's so unique in terms of what Flame actually does. Uh, they also want to mention that that, that uh, Flame also uses multiple methods for encryption, uh, and that's something that's that's important to keep in mind as well. Uh, so it's got uh, encryption. I think it's got maybe about five or so encryption methods. Uh, these are all kind of very simple methods, not very complex encryption methods, but uh, complex enough that they make the code much more obfuscated and, and difficult to uh, to kind of figure out. Um, and then also, I do want to mention that Flame is not a conventional executable. Really, it, it's not like a single standalone file. It is multiple DLLs that kind of get loaded together. Okay. And what that means is that uh, and it, it makes it much more difficult to analyze. Also, I think it's part of uh, what makes Flame hard to analyze is that it's also got uh, multiple file formats as well. So multiple file formats. Okay, and all these pieces together, the size, the number of different DLLs, the different file formats, the fact that there's a lot of encryption going on, the use of, of a virtual machine for a scripting language does not appear very often in malware. You know, all these things together make Flame that much more hard to analyze. And that th these things kind of effectively hinder analysis. Um, you know, these, this is all, this is just kind of hindering analysis. OK, and that's very important. If you're a malware author, you, you don't want anyone to be able to analyze your malware easily, especially, for example, an anti-malware vendor or the anti-malware community. So you might put in uh, different types of mechanisms to make your malware that much more difficult for anyone to analyze. 
Now, there are some other uh, characteristics of flame weathering that we're mentioning in the context of being difficult to analyze. Uh, one of the first things um, is that, uh, so uh, F flame also has a modified file creation data. So this is a very common technique that malware uses. Uh, this is just really about making it very difficult to kind of create a timeline for when the malware first got created. And, and so the reason we can tell that there's a, uh, a flaw here is that the file creation dates are like in the late 90s, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, so clearly not anything new. Uh, but because they've been modified, it's hard to kind of tell when the malware was first created. Uh, the second thing that I'd want to mention about, about Flame in terms of its analysis is that it basically uses uh, process injection to maintain some level of stealth on the system. And, and process injection, very common technique. A lot of malware uses process injection. Uh, there is something kind of a bit unique about uh, Flame here, and, and this is kind of in relation to Dooku and, and other, other threats. So, so uh, to give you an idea, uh, Dooku actually used, uh, I believe it was... Uh, ZW create section and also uh, ZW map view of section map view of section um, and these are the, the, what Duku used um, the, the standards for kind of doing process injection are include things like uh, uh, like load library and load library EX um, these are the kind of the gold standard, so to speak, that a lot of malware use. Uh, what's interesting with with, uh, with Flame is it appears to be doing something different than what's kind of normally done for doing process injection, and that it may be designed to kind of be a bit more hard to detect. But you know, you know, having said that, I mean the reality is that when you have a malware of this size, when you have malware with so many different components, it's 20 megabytes in size, it's got this kind of complex plugin architecture. There are many opportunities to kind of detect a piece of malware like this. And, and so, I, you know, I want to kind of point that out that, um, you know, there's a lot of, obviously, when you, when you see something that, that is kind of state-sponsored, that does create a sense of hype around um, that particular piece of malware. But I think at the same time, it's important to take a step back and realize that, you know, not many people will get infected by a threat like this. And, and even if, if they were to get infected, when you discover a threat like this, there are many opportunities to kind of detect or, or many opportunities to find ways to identify instances of flame running on a given system. Okay, but the main thing here is I think that I want to point out in terms of character, it's just the really unique thing about Flame in terms of its characteristics is just the size. And, and it's so unusual. You don't normally see such big malware just because it makes it so much harder to spread. And again, that goes to show that the authors of Flame weren't trying to get on a lot of systems. They were trying to go after a small number of systems and try to get as much information as they could out of those systems in a way that was sort of as under the radar as possible. And so it's a very different kind of motif, very different motivation for typical uh, malware authors to use. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. I'm going to stop this video right here. And if you haven't seen the other videos on Flame, I encourage you to look at them. I've tried to give you kind of an overall description of Flame, what it does, why it does it, and kind of how it operates. Um, and thanks a lot, and I thank you for your time.